Hi, welcome back to You Are The Answer. Okay, this is going to be a long one. I'm warning you ahead of time, so strap yourselves in. It's important, though, because today we're going to talk about the role that carbohydrates play in your body as it regards diet and performance. And as boring as this stuff can be, it's going to set the stage to talk about the more fun stuff that really drills down on how you can eat and supplement to get the most out of your training. Remember that in our last discussion on macronutrients, that your foods start out as chains of some type of organic substrate. For instance, proteins are composed of amino acid chains, fats are composed of various fatty acid chains, and carbs are composed of saccharide chains. Now the lengths of the chains and the number of bonds that are holding them together are what are going to determine the complexity of the food source. So the longer the chain and the greater the number of bonds, the more complex the source is and the slower that it's going to break down. However, longer and more complex doesn't necessarily always equate to better. There's a purpose for shorter and less complex sources as well, depending upon the situation or need. Or in other words, sometimes your body's going to need quick sources of fuel, and in other cases, longer lasting, slower burning sources. Consider fat. It's the most complex of all three macronutrients in the way that it's utilized by the body. And as I mentioned in our video on fat, it's not always the obstacle to getting fit and jacked that most people assume it to be. In fact, certain fats are essential to healthy functioning of the body. Fat also sends the greatest signal of satiety to the brain, in other words, telling you that you're full and stop eating, which is a tremendous aid in reducing the body's need to produce insulin. If your body's adapted to burning fat as a preferential fuel source, fat can provide a proverbial endless source of energy for health and performance not to mention produce leanness and jackness. However, the process for converting fat to glycogen and then to glucose is slower than for protein or carbs, so it's not always gonna be the best source of fuel for training and performance. For dieting purposes, protein is extremely satiating, and when it's used in combination with fat, like when you're on an ultra low carb diet, it can be very effective at promoting fat loss and lean mass gains. Protein can also be useful as a fuel source to produce muscle glycogen, but this isn't a good idea. Protein is intended to be preserved for cell maintenance and growth of vital organs and muscle tissue as it relates to general health. From a performance perspective, it's essential for recovery after training, as well as strengthening and growing the muscle tissue and the connective tissue that helps to make you bigger and stronger. Using protein as a fuel source weakens this process and it can even cause your body to burn its own muscle as fuel. That's not good for anyone, especially athletes that are trying to get strong and lean and jacked. Now that brings us to carbohydrates. As we've already said, they start out as chains of sugars called saccharides, and the length of the chain determines the complexity of the source and the amount of time that it takes to digest and convert into free blood glucose. Fats and proteins have multiple roles in health and performance. But carbs have one single role, to produce energy in the form of blood glucose and glycogen. Even the most complex carbs convert more quickly to glucose and create a faster insulin response than any fat or protein source. Now, your body needs glucose in order to function. A small amount of free glucose in the blood is necessary for brain and central nervous system functioning. If you've ever felt lightheaded or shaky in the middle of a workout, it's probably because you didn't have enough blood glucose for your brain and central nervous system to function properly. The majority of glucose is stored by the liver and muscles in the form of glycogen. And this is used as an important fuel source for muscle energy. Carbs can speed the process of fuel creation, fuel storage, and energy conversion better than either of the other two macronutrients. So far so good, right? Well, the devil's in the details. When carbohydrates compose the majority of a person's total caloric intake, insulin is constantly being released in order to clear glucose from the blood. After the brain gets what it needs, then ideally what remains is converted to glycogen for fuel storage and future energy needs. The average person can store a portion of their calories as glycogen in their liver, but over four times that amount in their muscles. However, when glycogen is topped off in these two areas, the remaining blood glucose gets stored in places that we don't want it, as fat. Now this process of storing glucose as fat in existing fat cells not only creates more fat, but it also creates the ability to store ever increasing amounts of fat by producing even more fat cells than what you started with. Another point, the conversion of glucose to fat also deranges the ability of satiety signaling hormones in the body, 
those hormones that let you know that you're full and to stop eating, and it keeps them from working effectively. That's why you get cravings shortly after you eat a meal that's heavy in carbs. And if this goes on unchecked, it's going to lead to a bunch of problems that revolve around decreasing insulin sensitivity. And this includes obesity, type 2 diabetes, muscle wasting, and a host of other health issues. Yet another important point. Problems with insulin insensitivity can happen regardless of the complexity of the carb sources. So if you think you're okay just because most of the carbs that you're eating are complex and not sugary, probably not. Any usable carb creates spikes in insulin production. However, these issues are going to accelerate by overconsumption of simple and sugary processed carbs. In other words, the more simple the carb, the faster the insulin spike, the faster you top off glycogen and start producing fat, and so on and so on and so on. Also keep in mind that simple carbs like sugar can actually take longer to clear the membranes of the stomach, which forces water to be drawn from other areas of the body just to force it out into the digestive tract. If you're an athlete, this can lead to nausea, bloating, and even cramping from dehydration. That's why sugar-laden sports drinks aren't good for you. If ever there was a carb source to totally avoid, it would be fructose in any form. Unfortunately, this ain't easy given that it's everywhere in the processed foods that you're going to find in the center aisle of pretty much every grocery store in the country. Why all the fuss about fructose? Well, put simply, in terms of scientific fact, fructose is stored preferentially by the liver which, as I mentioned, has a limited amount of storage space for glycogen. None of the muscles or vital organs have any use for this shit. So when the liver is topped off, the rest of it goes right to fat, and so the downward slide accelerates even faster. Manufacturers love fructose and all of its derivatives because it's dirt cheap and it makes their company more profitable. It also makes their crappy products taste super sweet, and because of its ability to rapidly spike insulin and mute the effectiveness of the satiety signaling hormones, it can be just as addictive as crack. Now after all this, carbs still play a very useful and important role in energy production for health and especially for performance. The key with carbs is quality and timing. For sedentary people or those who don't exercise very frequently, carb consumption can and should be kept to a bare minimum. But for an athlete, carbs are important in the recovery process as well as refueling for the next day's training requirements. Training of any kind depletes glycogen levels in the muscles and liver. And if these levels aren't quickly restored, the body can use fat as a source for glycogen, but as I mentioned previously, the process of converting fat to glycogen is much slower than it is for carbohydrates. So, in the absence of adequate carbs after exercise, the body will resort to breaking down protein, and even its own muscle tissue in order to restore blood glucose levels and glycogen. Talk about a step forward and two steps back, this is not a good thing. Again, protein needs to be spared for tissue repair and growth. You're not working out and paying all that money for protein supplements to get smaller and softer, right? Therefore, your body is primed to consume starchy carbs immediately following your training in order to replenish glycogen and blood glucose, hence sparing muscle tissue and the protein needed to build it and make it stronger. Training volume and intensity will determine the amount of carbs, but the best sources are starchy, less complex carbs in the form of potatoes, yams, bananas, white rice, pasta for those who can tolerate gluten, and with supplements, maltodextrin, waxy maize, or amylopectin will also do the trick. So what's the bottom line? Well, timing is everything with carbs. To best manage insulin production and lean tissue development, or to generally reduce body fat, all the science points to limiting your carb intake to post-workout time frames. On days when you're not training, your body can pretty much do without carbs, with the exception of maybe veggies, which are mostly fiber anyway. Again, the benefits of post-training carbohydrates are significant for the regulation of insulin response, as well as to maximize performance output through faster recovery, and to promote lean tissue development by preserving protein for muscle repair and rebuilding. This doesn't mean that you won't need to make adjustments. But as long as you make quality choices in your carb sources and make the timing match up with your needs, you can really maximize your performance and body composition goals by consuming carbs as a part of your nutrition plan. Now all this is going to tie into what we have to say next about nutrition planning to maximize energy output. And we'll talk more about different dieting systems later, but for now, hopefully this sheds some light on how your body uses carbs and why they're important. Thanks for hanging in there for this marathon. See you next time.